So the agenda today is to go over. The data we are using is roller data from DAHE package. It has only 10 observations and there are only two columns, weight and depression. Different weights of roller were rolled over different parts of a lawn and the depression was recorded. If you make a scatter plot, you get this picture. In line 14, I'm storing this linear model in M1. So I have an arrow pointing to M1 and LM is linear model. Summary M1, it tells us that this is a linear model and the formula used is depression versus weight, data is a roller and so on. It also calculates residuals or errors. So difference between Y and predicted values. Then it gives us information about the coefficients based on this summary, the way our equation is going to look like is estimate of depression equals B0, which is the intercept, negative 2.0871 plus slope times weight. There is a standard error, T value, and then probability based on T distribution. These numbers like standard error and T value are basically summarized in the form of a P value that you see in the last column. T value, for example, is simply estimate divided by the error. So for example, if you take this intercept and divide that by the error term, you get negative 0 0.438, 4389. So that's rounded to 439. So the coefficient estimate divided by standard error basically is approximated using T distribution t distribution which looks like normal distribution symmetric but thicker tails so roughly on this side negative 0.44 something and for calculating the p value what it does is it also finds out this area which is plus 0.44 that's the p value it is trying to calculate if you want to find the area under the curve for normal distribution or p distribution it's very easy in R, but for T distribution, you also need degrees of freedom. And somewhere in this output, you will see that there is degrees of freedom given, which is eight degrees of freedom. If I do probability of T, right, I'll just copy paste this number. And we say degrees of freedom is eight. So that gives us this area 0.336. So what is that? It is area to the left. So point three, three, six. And because this other side is a mirror image, so obviously that also is 0.336. Two times probability is 0.67.67227. So these values actually standard errors and T values are basically summarized in the form of P value. So ultimately we are more interested in P value. And same thing for weight. 2.667 divided by this will give you the T value. And using that, you can always figure out the P value. And in this case, actually for weight, it comes out to be statistically significant. This is much less than 0 0.05. So if you want to conclude with 95% confidence that weight contributes to this model statistically significantly, you can see two stars. So our confidence level is definitely more than 95%. So, Professor, can I ask, uh, uh, can you repeat one more time, what is the meaning of T value? I mean, you, you show how to calculate it, but can you repeat what is the meaning in the, in the question that we are working here? Purpose of using T distribution here is ultimately to say with some level of confidence whether this model is really useful or not whether weight is playing any significant role in the determination of like what will be depression depth B. So we see that there is a linear pattern and then there's a variability around that line, but we also need a stamp of approval statistically, whether that variable is playing a significant role. So 
we are not only estimating B0, the intercept and the slope, but we are also trying to capture the variability using standard error and converting these two into T value. Now, your question is like, why T value? Why not Z value or chi square or some other distribution? Yeah. And the reason we use T value is because it is known that these two ratios, they can be modeled using a T distribution. So those, those things have been already figured out. And although like uh, R gives us like more output than needed, ultimately we are actually interested in this. As a practitioner, we know that R can do good calculations and it will not make any error. And even if it gave me just this, that would have been sufficient for me to conclude that weight is playing a significant role in this yeah, model. Exactly, with p-value, yeah. But how this was arrived, just as a student, sometimes we also need to understand the mechanics, uh, what exactly it is doing and why it is giving all these values. And other thing is like, uh, why do we have eight degrees of freedom in this data? If you look at eight degrees, so remember our sample size is how much? 10. 10. So where did we lose uh, two degrees of freedom? Well, we have two variables, right? We have uh, the depression and we have the weight. No, not because of that. No. The reason we, you we are very close, but I think somebody is giving another option. Yeah. We're estimating two parameters. Beta uh, B1 and B0. Perfect, yeah. So you have to estimate B0 and also B1. So because of that, we lose two degrees of freedom. So you are left with eight degrees of freedom. In this case, this is eight because we are making use of two estimates to develop the model. And R square is 0 0.6445, which means this model captures a 64.45% of the variability in response. So 64.45% of the variability in Y is due to this variable that we have weight. So this is our equation with intercept and slope for a simple linear regression. So intercept, which is a B0, intercept is the predicted value of dependent variable when X is zero. So that's how I showed you on the scatter plot. If you extend that straight line such that X equals zero, so wherever it cuts the Y axis, that's your intercept. So that's where it intercepts the y-axis. That's why it is called y-intercept. And it is meaningful only when x can take values close to zero. If your independent variable, in this case, roller weight, if it, it is feasible to have values closer to zero, it will be meaningful. So our equation is this. And what it means uh, for the intercept, when roller weight is zero, one thing you should do is probably this comma, we should put it here actually, because sometimes the meaning changes. So when roller weight is zero, on an average, the depression will be negative 2.0871. So that's what it means. We always talk in terms of on an average because we are estimating Y. Now this is not very meaningful. Because in this case, roller weight is unlikely to be zero. If we have a roller and suddenly it's not going to become air and have a zero weight. Slope is the average change in Y when X increases by one unit. So in this case, we are talking about this number now as a slope. For every one unit increase in roller weight, on an average depression on grass increases by 2.6667. Predicting Y beyond the range of X is not advisable due to lack of any evidence that relation between X and Y will remain linear. So this is often a very common mistake sometimes people do. And what they do is they see that, okay, these are 
the dots and this is our linear model. So it does not mean if you have something like this as a linear model, you extend this x axis and extend this y axis and say that the predicted value based on this model is this in terms of y. So that is not allowed because we don't know whether the relation between x and y will remain straight because it can curve in either direction, maybe go up, go down. Because uh, we don't have any data, we should not use regression model for prediction. It should be mostly for estimation within the range. And in extreme cases, very close to the range, not like going too far away from the range. Like if you have house prices, your data points are between $100,000 and $500,000. So if you are predicting a situation for like a $2 million house, that will not be a correct use of the model because that is way beyond the range for which this model is applicable. So we have to be careful and we should not do that. Mm -hmm.